Hi, I'm Ferd. Welcome to my wood shop. Today, I'm going to show you how I put a finish on the slack clock. Um, I painted the face of the clock with this stone type paint that I found at Home Depot and the buttons painted black with a spray can and then on the back of the clock I uh, put a nice cherry finish over popular wood. One thing that I'd like to stress before you do any finishing or any staining whether you're spray painting it, whether you're brushing it on, whether you're putting it on with a rag or however it's being applied, do it in a well ventilated area. Always wear a respirator and it's always a good idea to wear rubber gloves. Let's go ahead and get started on the face of the clock. On the face of the clock, before you put any paint on it, you want to use some kind of a primer for the paint to have something to adhere to. On this one I used a sandable automotive type lacquer based primer and I've got one coat on the back of it already. I'm getting ready to put a coat on, on the front of it. But I'm going to put a coat on that, sand it back, knock all the nubs off of it, and then put another coat on it and then sand that back and it should be ready so long as I don't have any wood shown it should be ready to go ahead and put the paint on it. Now over here I've got a scrap piece of wood because I've, I've never used this kind of paint before so I'm going to paint this before I actually put it on my project to make sure that it's going to look good. That way you can familiarize yourself with it and you can also see how it's actually going to look when it's finished and it's dried. Now the buttons, I've got this little piece of scrap wood. All I did is simply drilled the 3 8 holes for the small ones and half inch holes for the for the big buttons just like I did in the face of the clock and I've got them mounted in that so when I go to spray these things aren't going to blow all over the place so good little tip for you right there make steady and straight passes across your workpiece bringing your can or your gun closer to you with each pass spray the paint just before you get to your workpiece and let go after you crossed over it repeating this every time you pass back and forth. Your first coat should be light and you should still be able to see the wood through. Let it dry according to the can's instructions and you put on another coat. Okay, I got about four or five coats of primer on it. Now what I want to do is take some 400 grit sandpaper and we're just gonna lightly sand this thing down you'll probably hit the wood in a few places but at this point I mean that's okay so let's go ahead and, and sand this thing down okay when you're sanding it it's gonna come off like a powder if you've got an air gun you can just take an blow it off like that and it will keep your uh, paper nice and clean and then also you blow off your work piece you can actually see the places that you need to do a little bit more sanding on and if you put enough primer on it it'll be a really smooth flat finish where you won't see any of the wood grain depending on what kind of uh, wood it is and then what this does if there's any raising of the grain in the wood this is going to knock it down flat smooth 
so if you put just a regular glossy finish on it or something like that it's going to be nice and smooth to the touch and a, a really pretty paint job now the buttons the only thing that I want to really do with these is take a little scotch bright pad and just kind of scuff them a little bit and take the shine off of the primer and these things they're ready to go ahead and be painted. I always like to detail everything I do inside and out so that the back of the clock is going to be black and then even on the face this outside edge is also going to be painted black. The face just the the very top part of it itself is going to have that stone painted finish on it. Now what I want to do now before I put the paint on it is I've got a little tack rag blow your dust off of your workpiece and take this tack rag little sticky thing kind of wad it up helps activate it and just use that to wipe all the excess dust that your blow gun didn't get off and then we can go ahead and start painting the back part of it okay this I'm using a satin black and I don't know if it's enamel or I, th I believe it's like an enamel based paint but the nice thing about this lacquer primer is that you can put just about any color or any type of paint over top of it whether it be lacquer enamel or uh, house type paint or whatever you can paint just about anything you want over top of it I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to hold the can about eight inches away from your project and just use nice even strokes. And I'm not worried about covering this whole thing the first time around. Just be patient and put it on kind of kind of dry. and it just takes a lot of practice to really get good at it. Now while I've got the black out I went ahead and took the tack rag and wiped off my buttons. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start painting those as well. Just turn it around and just just kind of missed away at them. And let that dry for about 20 minutes. Come back, put another coat on. Let it dry for about 20 minutes and another coat. Usually uh, about after four coats of it, it's all pretty well covered. And then you can go on to the next step. I let the back part of the clock dry for uh, it's been about 24 hours now and um, went ahead and, and uh, taped it off when you do this use some some good masking tape either 3M's or Norton's it's a little more expensive but the cheaper tape is gonna let the paint soak right through it and, and it's just something you don't want to happen but I've got it taped up and, and this is ready to be painted on the front of it now and also I got my test piece it's all painted and it turned out pretty good kinda like the results but what I ended up doing um, I sprayed one coat of, of the stone on there and it didn't look like it was going to cover very well so I, I've got this uh, like an antique white that I'm going to use like I did on my test piece I'm going to spray this and, and cover that dark primer up and then go ahead and put some of this on there so I don't end up with an inch thick of, of this stuff because it's pretty thick and I'm ready to get started on it Okay, I'm going to take my little 
scotch bright pad and I'm going to just lightly scuff it up a little bit. And take my tack rag and wipe all that dust off of it. And we can start painting now. Nice even dry coat and we'll let that dry for about 15 minutes. Three coats of the white on there and I'm ready to put this stone splatter stuff on it and this stuff is really really messy so if you've got any anything anywhere around it that you don't want it on cover it up because this stuff is just splatters all over the place and hold your can back pretty far and just kind of blast it and just like everything else just do a bunch of really light coats and we'll let that set up for a few minutes and come back and put another one on it and this is going to be our second coat. Okay, after about two coats of this looks pretty good to me. Um, I was reading the can and it uh, says on there that it takes you know about two coats to to cover it <clears throat> and you can see that it, it turned out really really nice it's uh, made by rust-oleum and that this stuff's pretty good I'm, I'm really impressed with it so my test piece took all night long to dry though so I'm gonna uh, wait a couple hours and then I'm gonna pull the tape off of it and then let this thing set all night long to dry and uh, we'll go from there okay I really like this stone finish that I got on the face of my clock but the problem is that over the course of time this thing's going to get dust on it and, and it's probably going to need to be wiped off and being the type of surface that it is I think that's going to be a real mess especially if if water gets on this so it's going to have some have to have some kind of a protective surface over the top of it and what I did is I went back to my test piece and I tried out a couple of different clear coats over the top of it this side of it here I used uh, satin oil based urethane and then on this side I used a water base Now you can see the the difference with the oil base that those finishes naturally turn yellow the water base finishes on the other hand go on clear and they stay clear so what I've decided to do was go with a clear satin water base finish over the top of it so I went ahead and taped it back up just taped the sides of it and I'm gonna take my uh, water-based clear satin polyurethane and I'm just gonna brush a coat over the top of this so after a while when it starts collecting dust or gets a little dirty on the front I can take a rag and wipe it off you know, a little water on it if I needed to. So, and that should finish this thing up.